Similarly, it is here said that persons who do not know your austerity see you moving with Uma. They misunderstand you to be lusty. After all, Lord Shiva is the he is the Lord and Master of the yogis and great renunciates. And how he is moving with Uma, with Parvati, so intimately. Sometimes, as described in Bhagavatam, he is giving Pravachan and Uma is sitting on his lap. Ah, can you imagine? Even if a person's a Grihasta, that's one thing. But you, a sannyasi, you would not expect this. But even a Grihasta, you would not expect this. If you went to a, le- a lecture of some very great um, reciter of Bhagavatam, and you went into the lecture hall, and he was sitting there on his Vyasasan, and his wife is affectionately sitting on his lap with his, her arms around him, embracing him, what would you think? Would you think, well, he's a Grihasta, so this is all right. Huh? You would think, what nonsense is this? To Chiketu, he was laughing about this. He came to the Himalayas and he saw, here are all these great saints and sages, yogis, sannyasis, sadhus, who have renounced everything in this world. Lord Shiva is giving them a class on Vairagya. And meanwhile, Parvati was not just sitting on his lap, but she was affectionately sitting on his laps. Their arms were around each other. Chuchuketu was thinking, this is too much for me, Haribo. <laughs> he began to laugh. And because he began to laugh, Parvati cursed him to become a demon. He became Vritrasura in his next life. Even though he didn't even mean any ill intent. Still, just out of jokingly he did like this. What to speak? Ill intent. So how to understand that here is such a great personality? Very difficult to understand. We simply have to understand through the eyes of the Shastra that what is he doing? Why is he doing? If you try to imitate Lord Shiva but you do not have the empowerment, the divinity of Lord Shiva, then your spiritual life will be destroyed. Therefore, it is said, do not try to imitate the great souls, but just try to follow in their footsteps. The footsteps of Lord Shiva, they are in the direction of reaching out to the fallen souls by giving them the mercy of the Lord. Now that we must do. But exactly how to do it, we need the instructions of the spiritual master to guide us. If we simply try to imitate Lord Shiva, you will be spiritually ruined. Because you cannot. And on the other extreme, there's Raghunath Das Goswami, who was so strict in following all the principles of Vaishnavism. He would not deviate even one inch. He would chant so many lakhs of rounds a day. He would offer his obeisances to Vaishnavas so many times a day, offer obeisances to the Murti so many times a day. He would worship the deity so carefully. It is said that his regulative principles were like the lines in stone. They cannot be erased by any means. No human being can follow the principles with the, to the extent of Raghunath Das Goswami. If you would try, you would die. He would practically not eat or sleep. But you can follow in his footsteps. Follow in the footsteps of his principles of being very strict in your sadhana. And according to the instructions and the guidelines of Guru, Sadhu, we can learn how to follow in his footsteps according to our particular realization. But if you try to imitate, you die. If you try to imitate Lord Shiva, you will spiritually die. We must follow in the footsteps of such great souls. And when such devotees of the Lord behave in such a way that is incomprehensible to our mind and senses, we must be very, very careful not to criticize, not to judge by our own mundane condition estimations. 
or even by our own neophyte conceptions of what it means to be a great devotee. Sometimes devotees become a little perplexed. That first you say an acharya teaches by example, and he's a perfect example. And then again we see that sometimes the acharya he is acting in such a ways that you cannot understand. Huh? So what to do? How do we know who actually is an acharya? Ultimately, Krishna in your heart, if you are sincere, will give you faith. We must understand the basic principle of the mission of the compassion of a great Acharya. We must see that in his life, in his actions, he is truly unmotivated, uninterrupted in his reaching out to lift the fallen souls to the process of Krishna consciousness. That he's always talking about Krishna, always thinking of Krishna, always inspiring others to be, be Krishna conscious that there is no selfish motivations in his life. If we see these principles, we can understand that he is only speaking what God has spoken. We can see this man is qualified, Acharya. But then how he engages in his activities day to day, sometimes very difficult to understand. Therefore, it is said here, Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra Vigena Bhujaya that even the most intelligent person cannot understand what a Vaishnava like Lord Shiva is doing and how he is acting. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.